Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we've got another thunderstorm warning issued for parts of Scotland through tomorrow as we are still going to see some thundery activity. Be able to have a look at the latest UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. As we are, as I said, still going to see some thunderstorms around and some general showery weather. Temperatures in and around average, but they should be on the upwards trend as we head towards the weekend. As it is looking likely now that higher pressure will be building back in. It's uncertain how warm it will get, um, especially because the wind could be coming in off the North Sea, which will bring a chill to the air. But it will be a lot better than it's been recently with a lot of these showers around. As we'll see from the longer range charts, that high pressure is going to hang around for a good few days, maybe even longer. And then there are fairly strong signs that it is going to move out to our west and open the floodgates for something colder potentially from the north. Now it is going to be early June, so we can't really see anything too cold, but it could be chilly, let's just say, uh, and pretty cold for the time of year. Temperatures into the low teens, perhaps, even across parts of Scotland. Very small chance, but a risk of some frost and just, just generally a pretty chilly feel. But as we'll see from the ensembles, there is still lots of options and they haven't really converged on that northerly wind. It's just that we're seeing it recurring from these operation runs quite a bit. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, which you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see plenty of showers around at the moment. We did see some more persistent rain through the morning, but that cleared, and now we've been left with an array of showers. You can see for southern areas, they're not particularly heavy, but they are pretty miserable, still with moderate bursts. Further northwards, so across parts of the Midlands, northern England, into southern Scotland, you can see some more oranges and reds indicating more torrential rain and potentially thundery activity. And we have had a thunderstorm warning issued for parts of northern England. It does expire in a couple hours' time, so we probably won't have a look at it in detail, but it is issued, and you can see why, for these hefty showers. Not only are they pretty intense, they are fairly widespread and fairly large. Uh, not the you know, sort of individual core of the storms, they're not absolutely huge but the general mass of rain is fairly widespread meaning quite a few are being affected by these showers at the moment they will continue through tomorrow probably won't be as heavy especially through england and wales but for scotland they could be uh, heavier as we head into tomorrow now have to look at the temperatures this evening because it's not particularly cold but it's not particularly mild or warm either generally around average for the time of year temperatures in the mid teens maybe higher teens earlier this afternoon but now not quite as warm so you're out there under the showers it is going to feel pretty chilly but you feel something a bit dry a bit of sunshine through tomorrow then it shouldn't feel all too bad now, if you look at the weather warnings, we do have that thunderstorm warning issued parts of northern England to southern Scotland here, but it is going to expire uh, around midnight tonight. So we won't have a look at this in detail. As by the time you're watching this, there'll be very little time left of that warning. But we have got a warning for much of eastern northern Scotland here from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. And we are again going to be seeing 15 to 20 millimetres in less than an hour for some, maybe 30 to 40 in a few hours, with lightning and hail being additional hazards. You can see again, we've got medium impacts, very low likelihood, so it's going to be an array of showers with some turning thundery and torrential. So you may get away with it, or you may not. This is the highest warning zone um, that we've got. Other areas still could see thunderstorms, it's just here is the highest risk, as I said. Now, if you go over to the latest UKV now, you can see those showers and storms too this afternoon, slowly clearing overnight. And by the early hours of tomorrow morning, pretty much completely cleared. As we head into Wednesday, you can see a few showers starting through the morning, could be heavy. And then you can see some more thundery showers breaking out across Scotland. Elsewhere, it could still be heavy and thundery, but you see they're much more sparse, more isolated and generally lighter. As we head into Thursday, perhaps some persistent rain heading in from the north overnight, but into the afternoon, some heavy thundery showers, maybe further eastwards and in the southeast, but most are drier and with a bit of sunshine poking through. 
If you head into Friday, again, some showers around, some thicker cloud, but actually it won't feel too bad out there if you do see dry conditions and that sunshine poking through in the afternoon. As we enter the first day of meteorological summer, it doesn't look too bad, and this is because that high pressure is building in. A few showers across northern England, some thicker cloud, but generally a pretty decent feel and some decent sunshine out there. And as we enter into Sunday, it's a similar story with generally pretty decent conditions. A bit more thicker cloud building in, which is unfortunate fortunate and that's because we've got this weak weather front pushing through and that is because around the high we could uh sorry let me put the upper temperatures on but around that high we could see slight transitions in air masses and slight little mixing and see that little cold wedge of air moving through saturday evening into sunday and that is going to bring that slightly thicker cloud through and a warm front eventually sweeping through so it does turn warmer with the air masses but with thicker cloud it might not be all too great through sunday but luckily, Saturday and Sunday are looking fairly dry, and that is all due to the fact that we have got higher pressure extending in off the North Atlantic. If you look at the max temperatures the earlier this afternoon, mid to high teens at best, not particularly great, but that is all due to the fact that we've had showers and cloud around. As we enter tomorrow, where we avoid the showers, could get to 20 or 21 degrees in the southeast, so actually not too bad at all. Elsewhere, though, quite a bit cooler because of those showers. As we head into Thursday, once again, could see maybe an 18, 19 degrees, but with some more cloud and showers around, we'll keep it a little bit cooler. And the same could be said for Friday, where again, 18, 19 degrees will be the top temperature for the last day of meteorological spring. Now it's the first day of official summer, you can see we're kind of starting on an average note. Temperatures around the high teens, maybe into the low 20s, but most importantly, it's going to be dry, which means that we are going to see plenty of decent conditions, plenty of sunshine where we do avoid that cloud and easy finally into sunday temperatures again are at 20 degrees if not slightly higher even though it's more of a muggier feel with thicker cloud because of that slightly warm air mass um we bring higher humidity it is going to be actually pretty warm so actually a decent day there on sunday with many areas back towards that 20 or 21 degree point which is looking pretty good indeed now, if you go over to the latest GFS and see what is in store over the course of the next few weeks, again, you can see low pressure moving in off the Atlantic, and that's giving us our showers at the moment. High pressure built in for the weekend, the start of June, and it looks pretty good for a good few days. However, as we're into the middle of next week, you see we unlock the door to northerly winds. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to turn actually frigid, but it will turn chillier and pretty cold. And you see low pressure coming in off the North Atlantic, chilly air, plenty of precipitation. So actually here, even though June actually starts pretty decent, the first sort of three or four days, as we head into this time next week, we could unlock the doors to those colder air masses. Here, though, only really getting in for northern areas. Pretty potent, but really only dominating in northern areas. Yes, those blues do get to southern England, but they're not quite as cold as it gets there. So that is something we do need to keep an eye on, because it could mean we'll be a bit, see a bit of a north-south split. Much chillier, unsettled in the north, drier, warmer in the south. It's still too far away to really uh, take major notes of that, but that is a possibility from the looks of this latest GFS run. Do you compare to the latest GM? Again, low pressure systems coming in off the Atlantic over the next couple of days, but eventually high pressure building in for the weekend, extending itself over the top of us. And you can see the wind is just coming in from the north or northeast. So that means it is going to be potentially a little bit chillier, but some plenty of warm air masses there. You see the temperature deviation looking a good 8 to 10 degrees above average, You're looking decent indeed. And then eventually we could see that northerly wind extend in. It does take its time here from the latest GM it does take a good 10 days from now but you eventually see that colder air is pushing in and those blues coming in off the North Sea and from Scandinavia and from Svalbard so yeah would turn pretty chilly if that northerly wind did continue but does it slightly more delayed than the latest GFS and slightly different with the exact wind direction just showing you there is still a lot of uncertainty and of course, from the looks of this, we could still hang on to the mild air. The cold air doesn't actually fully get in on the run. It just looks like it will. And very quickly, that low and that cold air could get swept away if the Atlantic tries to break through. So we'll have to wait and see. But again, GM sort of going towards that route of a bit of a colder northerly for the second week of June.
Now, if you look at the latest ECMWF, uh, again, the high pressure building in through the weekend and into the start of next week, and then we see those attempts at northerly winds. Now, they're nowhere near as successful as the GM or the GFS, and that's because the high pressure doesn't shift as far northwards, meaning we don't see as much blocking, and it doesn't force that cold air as far southwards. Still would be slightly chillier. There is some fresh air pushing in, but just nowhere near as cold as the other two runs. Now, to finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you see this uncertainty, generally around average or below average, actually, over the next few days as we do have some slightly chillier air with these lows. And then we go to average to above average into the weekend and start of next week and kind of stay there for a few days. Then as we head around the 6th or 7th, we see massive spread. Some runs going cold, if not really quite chilly, below zero degrees at 850 HP, a good six to eight degrees below average. Other runs more at average or above average. So it just shows you that even though the operational runs are looking fairly short on some sort of northerly flow, the majority of the ensemble is actually not really showing it. Uh, again, highlighting the massive uncertainty we do have. The one certainty we do have is, look at the next week to 10 days, apart from a few showers over the next few days, for southern areas, it's looking actually pretty dry. So yes, temperatures won't be amazing, probably not going to get much above 21 or 20 degrees, but for some, that's really nice. It's, but it is going to be pretty dry for the next 10 days, which is a big positive. And if we finish by looking at the latest ECMWF, very similar. Below average uh, moments, turning slightly above average, and then a bit more of a drop around that 7th, 8th of June mark. So perhaps more ensemble members here going for something chillier. But regardless, not an overwhelming number. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But for the time being, it's turning a lot drier. We'll be turning warmer through the weekend in the start of next week before it could turn colder once again. But we'll have to wait and see because that is way too far in the future to say with any real certainty. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.